So I'm back in this area here. As you can see, I had a fantastic day out with uh, Bruce Connolly. We met up at the, at the the south gate of the old city wall, Qing or the Ming Dynasty wall. Then we walked through the Hutong area. He introduced me to a church that was hidden inside the Hutong area, which was fantastic. I think you will agree when I share it with you. We walked through the Badlands, which is an area that is called the Badlands because of the title of a book, which uh, described that area being the area where people who would make money bringing goods into the city through that south gate, which is where the main tax for goods going into the city happened way back in the day. The, the reason why it was called the Badlands is because they would spend the money they made in that area on various things, as you can imagine. We walked up through that Hutong area, then we headed up to the railway station, stopped for a coffee, and then walked on to see the Edgar Snow Museum, which um, is a museum dedicated to an American journalist that wrote a very, very famous book called Red Star Over China, um, spent time during the revolution here, and very famous for meeting the key players of the revolution. <laughs> I've got the It's interesting for me because a lot of people will argue there's no religion in China, it's not allowed. But I've discussed that before on a different video. But this is just, again, amazing. When I go out with Bruce everywhere he takes me, I'm always surprised. Bruce has been in Beijing, China, for something like 37 years now. And uh, he's always keen to share with me these, these off the beaten track areas. So right now we're in this church. We're going to head up to what he calls the Badlands, which is interesting. And then we're going to end up looking at uh, Edgar Snow, trying to understand the American journalist called Edgar, Edgar Snow. It's what I did as a Joseph. Sit there and think about it. Some reflection time. This area here actually became very famous for Chinese travellers using the railway. You're only five minutes to Beijing railway station. From, from here? here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
And in those days, it was a long journey to, to travel through China. Mm. And people come up from the south, it take two days from Guangzhou to Beijing. But they, they had to travel onwards to to northeast China, to Harbin, up in, mm. near, near um, the border with Russia. But um, they had to stay maybe one or two nights in Beijing, partly to get tickets, because you, it's not like today, you couldn't go online and book your tickets. You to get here, get another ticket. So they often stayed in these very cheap, very small hotels, mm. in these alleys that we were in. Mm. And they would try to get a train ticket to take them further north. Or there'd be some entrepreneur at the Hutong, always somebody in China can get your ticket <laughs> at a price. <laughs> Oh, there's no problem if you know the right person. If you know the right person. Yeah. And these are, these are these hotels here that you're these sharing with me, yeah? Uh, just cheap rooms. And it, all the sheets are out here because they dry the sheets out in the, in the, in the outdoors. There's no dry machines. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you just deliver that, yeah? <laughs> it's a small wee alley. A wee small alley. A wee small alley. Okay. What, what railway station is this? Right, right. This is Beijing Giant, Beijing Railway Station, the central station of Beijing. Now, before that, the earlier railway stations were outside the city wall. This one was inside the city wall. Now, it was built in 1959. It was built in 10 months. 10 months? 10 months. This is one of the, the 10 great projects that commemorated the 10th anniversary of the founding of New China. Mm. So these great massive projects, this one, there were 300,000 workers building this railway station. So a lot of people. It, mm. it was finished in time before the, the 1st of October 1959. Mm. And it is a, an incredible achievement. And there are several buildings around the city, and they're all still standing today, mm. no problem. You know, mm. built by hand. Mm. Mm. And also, if you notice the, the design of these buildings, now, you can take a, talk at length about this, but in 1949, China was in a very, you know, relationship with the former Soviet Union. Mm. A lot of them, you know, Chinese technocrats were trained in, in the Soviet Union in Moscow. But also a lot of um, Russians were coming to China as advisors. So the architecture was heavily influenced by of course. The, the, the Russian. Mm. And you can find um, buildings, if you go to Ulaanbaatar, for example, in Mongolia, you find buildings quite similar. But there was a, a split between China and the um, Soviet Union. Um, the, the Russian advisors went away. The Chinese then d designed everything <clears throat> themselves. But what they did was rather than simply only use the Soviet design, they did it with Chinese characteristics. So if you look there, if you look at the roof of the, 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 the Beijing railway station, you can see the pavilions, you can see the, 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 the yellow tiling. Mm. It, that was to signify it was Chinese. Chinese. Again, Chris. Yeah. Hi. So far, we've finished by finished before o'clock. We're going to go and have a look at this uh, yeah. Edgar Snow. Well, it's, if it's if the, you're still there, you're still there. This is the problem in China. You promise to go somewhere, to take people somewhere, and then of course, lo and behold, it's gone. What the hell did we get lost? Me. Oh yeah. I can't remember. There. Uh, So who was Edgar Snow, Bruce? Well, to be very briefly, he was an American journalist. Uh, at the time in the, the 1930s, uh, 1920s, 1930s, you know, there was a civil war going on in China between the, the nationalists uh, by Chiang Kai-shek and also the 
the communist forces mm. under Mao Zedong. Now, the Mao Zedong forces actually went to a base in the um, Shanxi province, I think it was uh, Yan'an, and they said up there, a lot of them living in the kind of um, very simple cave dwellings that were quite popular in the Shanxi, but Snow went, found his way there, and he settled down with the, um, you know, the, the people there, with the, the, the communist divisions there, and he started writing about it, mm. and he started to have a great passion for what he was seeing. And it's often quite different to the perspective that's being said back in, in the West. He's presenting very much an image of what he saw every day. It's something very much a lot of us see in, in China. We're talking about the, the devotion, the, the patriotism, the discipline that was there. And this is actually one of his most famous books. Red Star over China. Mm. It used to be the part of Jim Chung Park. See that, yeah? This is me, Ian, here in Beijing, saying to you, take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of your community, and above all, peace out. Catch you in the next video. Ha <laughs> ha!